Escape to doors. As I'm still stranded here on the beige planet. Could be worse, mate. Robot, I'm trying to make a video. Do you mind? I tend to watch a lot of YouTube videos, and recently I found one which changes everything for me. I watched this video by Retro Bits about this CPU upgrade. He got it for like $15 at a thrift store. But he also mentioned this leading edge computer and how he had upgraded the BIOS with the MR BIOS. And yeah, that stands for Microid Research, not Mr. BIOS like everybody thought, including myself. Genius. Uh, Anyway, it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. As a result, he was able to get his leading edge 486 to work with a CF to IDE adapter. And that's the whole reason why I made this video, success with XT IDE. And I couldn't get anything to work with this machine other than the original hard drive. And where this might be music to other people's ears, to me, I got enough noise on my ears already. I don't need any more. I'm happy to trade all of that nostalgia away to eliminate that horrible sound. And this thing could fail tomorrow, who knows, it's 30 plus years old, so that's why I went to XTIDE to finally solve this problem. Now as I've stated before, this is the leading edge Fortiva 5000, and lurking inside is the Daewoo CPC 2800 motherboard. Back when I made the XTIDE video, I only knew of two people that owned this machine. That was myself and username CPC2800 at the Vintage Computer Federation forums. Now he was hoping to modify the BIOS and maybe even hire someone to do that. I sent him off one of the XTIDE cards that I made and he was able to get another hard drive to work successfully on his machine. Now, of course, I knew of MR BIOS at the time, but I didn't find anything relating to my leading edge machine. And I just assumed that, well, they never made an MR BIOS that would work with a leading edge. Well, I was wrong. And just a few weeks ago, I got a message from someone who's got one of these CPC 2800 motherboards. Thank you so much for the video. I have a test rig from 1992 and it was still going strong until the hard drive decided to fail. Luckily, I backed up everything beforehand and I have tried so many different things in order to get the Daewoo to accept anything that can boot, but no luck, but your video has given me hope. Thank you so much. And then it was followed up with, I've ordered the parts and then thanked me again, which seems great, doesn't it? You know, imparting information, helping another retro enthusiast out, or did I just waste somebody's time and money? The answer is yes, no, maybe. Let's dig in. In the Retro Bits video, he described how he chose the MR BIOS based on the chipset. And there's a Google document that has everything listed. And at the bottom of the document, you see those headings. And if you scroll past the S's, you get to UMC. And in my case, it is the UM. 82C491F, and that is paired with the 82C493F. So doing the same as RetroBits, I went to the UMC and I search on that list and there are only two entries. And it says 82C491 slash 493 single chip. Now to me, there's clearly two chips, but maybe somebody can explain that. And these boards don't relate to mine whatsoever, so I picked the 1.65 version. And assumed it wouldn't work, but let's give it a go. So I downloaded the bin file from the Dropbox that mentioned in the info, and I put it on my Winbond EE prom. That way when this doesn't work, I can quickly try the other version. I removed the stock BIOS and inserted the MR BIOS that I created. Now this socket's gonna give me grief later, but uh, I've only put the chips in and out probably, you know, maybe a dozen times, but this is what you get with retro machines. Immediately fires up. Reads the memory correctly. Starts MS-DOS. And just like Retro Bits said, first time worked amazingly. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. 
Does that mean that after making the XTIDE board and making the video and then essentially encouraging someone else to put the thing together and solve their problem that way, all I had to do was change the BIOS? Let's examine that. First thing I'm going to test are my CF cards. Now I've, I've got the cheap Amazon ones. I've got two 1 gigs and a single 4 gig card. It immediately recognizes my 4 gig card. Fantastic. And immediately boots up into DOS. And to shorten this out, I tested the two 1 gig cards. They worked just fine as well. So on this machine, MR BIOS scores a win with the CF cards. I then followed that up with my SD to IDE adapter. I tried several different SD cards and everything passed except for a single 32 gig SD card. That one failed. And this brings us to what would be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Myself personally, so I started off with a 160 gig hard drive. This thing also failed with XTIDE. So I'm just assuming that it's probably not gonna work with this either. And this time my assumption was correct and indeed it failed. And that failed and a second failed, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th failed with one exception, the original Fujitsu drive from 1994. MR BIOS finds it immediately and tells me that it's a 528 megabyte drive. And of course it boots into Windows 95 no problem. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm content with CF cards and SD cards. But for some people, that is still a deal breaker. And some people love these old hard drives. They like the sound of them. They like the whole experience. I, quite frankly, I, I feel the same way about CRTs. I've had enough of them. And I'm happy to leave them behind. Now, as far as XTIDE goes, I was content to put that card together. And I enjoy this kind of thing. So even if I don't use the thing with this machine anymore, well, that doesn't really matter because I enjoy the process. And I hope that Sakun P1977 feels the same way. I would hate to feel like I encouraged someone to do something that they didn't need to do. Now, me personally, I'm just going to use the MR BIOS because I'm only going to be using a CF card on this machine anyway. And had I known that MR BIOS would have solved this problem for me, I clearly would have said that in my original video, but this is just a couple days ago I discovered this, so... The good news is, there's more than one way to skin this cat. Just one more thing. Oh, no. Now I have got a bigger problem. I just removed that chip and that fell out. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I guess that's what I gotta do. Five minutes later. All right, back to it. I just had to pull that single pin out and replace it with one that I extracted from another. So after that little debacle, I reinstalled the stock BIOS. I plugged in that 4 gig CF card, selected auto detect the LBA1, and then I rebooted the computer. And for the first time, this machine is accepting a CF card. Ever. I bought that CF card around the same time that I made the video for XTIDE and I got it about a month later and never in a million years would I have thought that that would have worked. I even tested it with those two one gigabyte CF cards and no, it still refuses those. So there's something about that four gig that it just seems to like. Well, I can't explain that, but also that means I'm stuck using one card with this machine kind of like it was originally, one hard drive. So I went back to MR BIOS, of course. And because I've had quirky response from CF cards and SD cards in these machines, uh, I 
don't believe it's going to work until I see it fully install DOS and Windows and run a bunch of programs and do 3D, etc. And I can confidently say that this machine runs 100% with MR BIOS and a CF card or XTIDE. Once again, thanks to Retrobits, his video made it clear to me how to find MR BIOS and how to choose it. And for that, I'm really thankful. I've got a bunch of other machines that I could possibly try MR BIOS on. How exciting is that, right? really is amazing to be able to insert new life into this 30 plus year old equipment. Stick around, I got plenty more things like this coming up on Escape to Dust. Hi neighbor, I'm glad we're together again. <laughs>